Cohabitation or cohabbing, being the practice of keeping multiple individual animals in one enclosure, is a hotly debated topic within reptile keeping, and almost everybody with an opinion on it will tell you not to do it. Ever. Now as I personally have got relatively limited experience with cohabbing, I don't want to come on here and make a video yet telling you whether or not you should do it. But with that being said, I do have three species cohab currently, being my line day geckos, some of my leopard geckos, and now also my Chinese leopard snakes. So just what I want to do today is share my first thoughts on cohabitation, and also update you all as to what I am doing with the groups of animals that I do have together. So let's get straight into it. On the 1st of February 2020, I acquired two female leopard geckos, which are then named Dotty and Pepper, and I put them both together in a quarantine enclosure. The long-term plan with these two geckos was, and still is, to put them in the main leopard gecko setup I've got up there with my male leopard gecko speckles so that I can form a little breeding group. Now, I am very happy to report that in the six months of owning the two female leopard geckos and keeping them together, they have got on perfectly well. Um, the only little bit of negative interaction I've seen between them is that during one feeding session, Pepper did get a little bit overexcited and she did accidentally give um, Dotty a little nip, but it didn't leave a mark and she let go a second later. So, you know, apart from that, they have got on perfectly well. I'm anxious to bring Dottie and Pepper out of their quarantine enclosure, firstly because it's just like too small for them in my opinion, but more importantly, I want them in this main reptile room because this is an unheated room and so it does get really cool in the winter, making it easy for me to hibernate the geckos, which of course is essential for cycling them to get ready for breeding in next spring. The obvious thing to do would be to add Dottie and Pepper to Speckles enclosure now, but although they are technically of breeding size, I don't want to risk jumping the gun and having them breed when they aren't fully mature. I faced a similar problem back in spring when I was going to add me two Chinese leopard snakes together, but decided against it in case it was going to harm the female, as egg laying for her could be quite dangerous if she wasn't fully mature. But that was six months ago. Both of the snakes were at breeding size then. So six months later, they are almost certainly mature. So why not put them together now? Normally what you would do with snakes like this is just pop them together in the spring, ready for the breeding season, and then separate them out later on. But what I've decided to do is put them together now in early July, and then I'll keep them together for the rest of the summer, the autumn, the winter during the hibernation period, and then the spring after that, assuming that they all get on. Because in doing so, I will have freed up Rusty, the male Chinese leopard snake's enclosure, and so I can put the two leopard geckos into it and all problems are solved. Now as I just hinted at, the ideal thing to do is to move the male snake into the female's enclosure and not the other way around, because obviously the female is going to be undergoing more stress uh, as a result of their interaction. Now if you've watched any of my videos about my Chinese leopard snakes, you will know that they are very fast and very shy. So how on earth was I going to get Rusty out of his bioactive enclosure without tearing it apart? Luckily, Rusty is actually very food aggressive. So what I planned to do was lure him out of the enclosure with a little mouse and get him to come into a little plastic box. So that all I then had to do was lower him down into Chloe's enclosure, which is immediately below his. Like all the best ideas, it sounds so easy on paper, doesn't it? You'll see that this plan did not work particularly well because Rusty grabbed at the mouse before he was leaning far enough out of the enclosure for the weight behind his strike to make him fall out and into the box. I tried dragging him out the enclosure via the mouse, but he had a very good grip on a piece of cork bark in his enclosure and his snakes are so strong, there was absolutely no way I was going to get him out with this method. So I did just resort to poking him a little bit until he actually flung himself straight out of his enclosure and I only just caught him on the edge of the plastic box.
Once moved, I did offer Rusty a second mouse, just to make sure that he wouldn't divert any of his insatiable appetite towards Chloe. As soon as he'd finished his second mouse, Rusty went sniffing around for Chloe until he found her, at which point things went really rather hectic. I hadn't expected to see much action at all because it's not the typical breeding season for these snakes and once again they are very shy. But what actually happened is that Rusty chased Chloe around the enclosure in full view for about an hour. This event illustrates just how much stress an event like this can cause. Recall that these two snakes are so shy that I almost never see them, yet here they were in full view for an hour as I filmed them, and so this event must have caused a lot of upheaval to the two snakes. If this sort of behaviour were to continue, then I would obviously have to separate the snakes, which is why I will be keeping Rusty's enclosure free for at least a month before moving the leopard geckos into it, so that if I do have to separate the snakes, then I do have an ample enclosure to let me do that. If the snakes need separating, then I'm just going to have to think of something else to do with the leopard geckos. On the flip side to this, if you are going to be introducing animals with the intention of long-term cohab, then you are going to have to let them settle out the hierarchy and perhaps chase each other around for an hour before they settle down, because otherwise they are not going to be housed together successfully. It's all about letting animals be animals and knowing when to make the right call in terms of separating them from each other. It is essential to know your animal's behaviour like the back of your hand so that you are able to come to a good judgement about when interaction is becoming too aggressive and that it would therefore be in the best interests of the animals to separate them. So although this video is neither made to recommend nor to put you off cohab, I will say right now that unless you've at least got a couple of years of experience with reptiles then I just would not recommend it and of course whether cohab could ever work with the species that you're thinking of doing it with is another question and something that I will have to address in a future video. But with all that being said the snakes at the moment do seem to be getting on quite well so as long as they do feed and they aren't chasing each other around all the time then I think that Cohab should be reasonably successful with them and I can go ahead with moving the leopard geckos into Rusty's enclosure in a couple of weeks. Now in 6 to 12 months time I will come back and make a full video about cohabbing and my opinions on it because by that time I will have all three of the leopard geckos together and um, I'll have seen how it's panned out with the snakes and I will also be able to talk about how the trio of animals that I'll be getting in a month or so to put in the vivarium that's going to go here and um, I will have seen how they do get along with each other. Was that a spoiler? But anyway guys, I hope that you found this video entertaining or it's at least giving you some food for thought and if so you will subscribe to the channel so that you can catch up on the other things that I'll be doing in the near future. Um, the vivarium that I plan on putting up here should be here within another fortnight I think so I will show you how I set up an enclosure like all of these around me so you know if you do want to see that then do subscribe because I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys!